Welcome to this special edition of Dirty Water TV from Boston's Red Carpet. Welcome to Boston's Red Carpet. I'm Tanya Mesrick. Tonight we're horsing around at the Ritz for Bina Farm Center's 10th anniversary celebration. At this gala, we definitely expect the unexpected, like when a Bina therapy horse showed up at the ball. Tonight's event includes kids of all abilities, an award to McLean Hospital, and some special words from Larry Lacchino. Let's go take a look. Babak, it's been 10 years. How did you and your wife, Corinne, come up with the idea to create Bina? We, after we had kids, um, we decided that we wanted to start our own organization. We decided to put together Bina Farm as it stands today. How do clients pay for the programs at Bina? Our participants pay out of pocket. We subsidize every single program that we offer through fundraising efforts. We provide scholarships for those people who cannot afford our already subsidized rates. And all of our veterans programs are provided free of charge. Sarah, you've been riding horses for a long time at Bina. What do you love about it? Because I love Harry Potter, but he's my favorite horse ever. Larry, you're going to say a few special words tonight. What does it mean to you to be here? Well, I've been here a few uh, other times, and we're going to uh, recognize a uh, 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 Bina uh, person who has uh, had a wonderful experience, started about seven or eight years ago, and I'm happy to be here to help the cause and to recognize this young man. Congratulations on receiving this award. Why is this research so important? It's important because what's happening at the barn is extraordinary. Um, I've been treating women who are survivors of childhood abuse for many, many years. And in all my years, I've not seen anything as, of, as much immediate benefit to my patients with PTSD is what happens at the barn. Why is being a teen ambassador so important? Being a teen ambassador is important because it's really taught me how to be accepting of people of all abilities. Horses and kids, that's a wonderful thing. And the earlier they start, the better because it's, it's a life-changing thing for a little girl, a little boy to get on a horse and feel the camaraderie with that horse. And the love both ways. The love goes to each. It's a wonderful thing, and the horses like it. Bina Farm is a place where children can believe, imagine, nurture, and achieve. Let's take a closer look at this very special place. I just love the horses and the people here. The people here really care about the uh, kids that ride. They really give them an opportunity to change and give them an opportunity to have a better life than they would already have without Bina. My daughter and I have been coming to Bina for approximately three months now, I think. She had a hard time at first getting used to the idea of actually going on top of a horse and walking around because with her physical um, challenges, it's really frightening for her. But I think that Oreo and obviously her amazing therapists and the volunteers here made it really comfortable for her rather quickly. Honestly, after she's ridden on the horse, she seems to just relax. Well, I'm a physical therapist and I use hippotherapy, which is a treatment tool used by physical, occupational, and speech therapists using the movement of the horse to improve a client's neuromotor function. Sarah's been coming to be in a farm for seven years. When she comes here, she feels like she's home. I feel like I'm home in very comfortable surroundings. They're encouraged to exceed and they're encouraged to be who they are. Has being a farm changed your life or helped you? Mara's being helpful to me. Her role is leading my horse. But now you're independent. Independently, I don't do that anymore. How does that make you feel? Happy and excited. Coming up next on Boston's Red Carpet from Horsing Around at the Ritz, I'll sit down with event planner extraordinaire Brian Raffinelli and take you inside the launch party for his long-awaited new book, A Great Party. Welcome back to Boston's Red Carpet. I'm Tanya Mesrick. Now it's time to take a look at some of the best looks of the night from the horsing around at the Ritz Gala and the after party, brought to you in part by the new Avery Bar. Alexandra, you look stunning tonight. Who are you? Who are you wearing? So this is actually Agent Provocateur with a BC BG skirt and then Jimmy Choo. Lita, what are you wearing? I'm wearing Zach Posen for Target. 
That is the best. You look stunning. Thank you. Corinne, what are you wearing? My favorite designer, Talbot Runhoff. They're from Ger Germany, made in Berlin. I love this whole outfit. Thank you. The lapel pin, the glasses. Tell me about it. Sure. So the jacket is Ted Baker. Um, it's, it's just, I just love um, pattern and color. Um, the glasses are C. Christina, who are you wearing tonight? Good old Prada. <laughs> and your necklace? My necklace is from Portobello Road. Oh, we love Portobello Road. See us at Portobello Road and I'll show you all their sparkly things. What do you have on, young <laughs> sir? <laughs> well, I love to mix things up, so I've got my off-whites and a little bit of Calvin Klein. I love your whole look. Thank you so much. Who are you wearing? Um, ASOS. Jenny, you're, you look smashing tonight. What are you wearing? Ronnie Kobo. I actually love this designer, and typically the ones of the dresses that I'm wearing are much more form-fitted, but this one feels a little bit more relaxed. I like how, like how it's draped in various. John, I think we match. What are you wearing? A vintage jacket. I love it. Ben, what do you think of this? the new digs here, the new Avery? I mean, I love it. It's modern, it's cool, it's very hip. It's, uh, it's great. I think they did a great job with it. I really like the host of the show. <laughs> From planning the White House state dinners to the most magical weddings, Brian Raffinelli is the go-to event planner for the most exclusive and high-profile events. When it comes to designing the perfect celebration, there's one go-to genius in Boston whose focus on weddings and philanthropic events has the nation knocking on his door. He has a really a, a special way of putting a wow in whatever event that he does and, and really using an event to tell a story. Every moment with Brian was memorable and his team, they're just phenomenal. Um, the Christmas decorations definitely were a highlight. Guests really felt like it was their house when they came in. Brian made it feel warm, his team made it feel fun, and that's what really Mrs. Obama always wanted. Brian Raffinelli launches his first book, A Great Party, in true Raffinelli style, creating the unexpected, telling a story, and thinking big. We met up with Brian at Winston's Design Studio to learn more about the Raffinelli rules and how we can make them our own. I'm really excited to do this Thanksgiving table um, with something as simple as a pumpkin. I know, we, we all have these at home. On this table, which is a table for 10, we are using 24 pumpkins okay. of all different sizes. And that's what's important. So small, medium, large, that's what you want to do. Okay, you want to mix it up. Definitely. And you know, so, so you can see how the table sort of waves up and down. That's, that's what I've been looking for in doing this. Okay. And so right now, we can sort of finish this off, right? All and right. don't be afraid, you should actually right. paint everything. Paint the stem, uh -huh. paint half the pumpkin. You don't have to paint the whole pumpkin, but you could paint the whole yes. pumpkin. Yes. Create some variety because then your guests are going to have this great, you know, discovery all along the table. In my book, I talk about this idea of like making something from nothing. I love more. More. I mean, it, it's probably, more interesting to take one off the table than not have enough. When we designed that, the White House, we took the basic, most basic things, like bows, package bows, small ones, medium ones, big ones, small pumpkins, medium ones, big ones, right? And we turned them into something. It suddenly awesome. becomes this beautiful art piece at the end of the day. Expect the unexpected, these unexpected colors of the pumpkins. And at your book launch, <laughs> you surprised us all. I surprised everybody including Linda Henry, who was interviewing me. I did warn her and I said, there's a surprise at the end of the interview. She didn't know what it was. Okay. But I told a story and this beautiful image came up on the screen that's in my book of confetti exploding all over the place. <laughs> but I told the story of we were at a party and at the end, I clapped my hands and bam, the confetti went off. <laughs> and, and, and you know, and there's this joyful moment and you just yes. laughed. That's what 400 yeah. people did in we, my book We party. were all laughing. It, it was, was, it was, Oh, it was and no, you know, can you do that at home? Well, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> and the book is so gorgeous with all the photos, these beautiful photos from Michael Blanchard and all these photographers you work with. And the writing was was your own. Yes, absolutely. So, and it, it is. And I'm actually really proud of those words because those stories are very authentic. It's written beautifully. Thank like you. Uh, you have another career. Thank you. Party planner, now you're writer. <laughs> I'll work on that tomorrow. <laughs> Up next, we'll explore the white shirt design competition inspired by the Heritage on the Gardens and Fontaine and talk horses and red carpet fashions at Bina Farm. That's when Boston's Red Carpet returns. Welcome back to Boston's Red Carpet. I'm Tanya Mesrick. 
Fun first, French second. That's the mantra that drives Rochambeau, Boston's newest French restaurant. Let's learn more about this magnifique approach to dining. Chef Nick, we're excited to be in your new space, Rochambeau. Tell us a little bit about the restaurant. Well, Rochambeau is a, a beautiful French uh, style brasserie. We like to say we're fun first, French second. It's a beautiful space. And you guys are non-stop here. Oh, we really are. We open at 7 a.m. We have a wonderful cafe downstairs called make croissants and danishes and brioches and sandwiches. You name it, we have it. We have a fantastic pastry chef. She's pretty busy. Yeah. And then we, we open for weekend brunches. We opened for lunch starting last week as well. So, and you can't forget about the lounge. The lounge no. is busy. It looks great. It's like a it's like a Parisian subway almost kind of look. It feel, is. Isn't it? The feel of this place, I, it's hard to describe it, but when you come in here, you feel like you're in France. We're open late night till two in the morning in the bar area. And we, we serve food till about midnight. It's uh. It's a great time. Yeah, it's always hard to find food late night, so it's good for people to know they can come here. Yeah, absolutely. Still get a meal. Absolutely. We're trying to kind of figure out some really later, later night things we're trying to play with. And uh, Chef de Cuisine, Matt Godet and I, we're trying to really kind of hone down what could be fun to have after, not, after yes. late. I'm thinking French fries. Yeah, we're, we are thinking poutine, actually. We're thinking different poutines. And now you're going to show us some of your favorite dishes. Yeah, I'm very excited to have you in the kitchen. Nick, this all looks so delicious. What are we making? So today we're making a, a traditional seafood bouillabaisse cataplana. So a cataplana is a vessel that it kind of cooks in. You see one on the stove uh -huh. there. We have swordfish, we have clams, we have shrimp, chorizo, mussels, uh, finely potatoes, leeks, a little lobster, a little crab leg. It's a great shareable dish. That is gorgeous. A crisp white shirt is the staple for any fashionable woman's closet. Here in Boston, one retailer is known as the queen of the white shirt. The white shirts for me represent the very beginning of my dreams. This is that with the vision of to make the most perfect white shirt for everyone. Anne Fontaine believes in creativity. Her eponymous label, founded 26 years ago, is built on the white shirt and a woman's ability to imagine it in 10,001 ways. Her Boston store, located at the iconic Heritage on the Garden, also believes in creativity and has partnered with the Mass College of Art and Design to create the Anne Fontaine White Shirt Challenge and Scholarship. We're joined today by store director Amanda Blinn to tell us a little bit about the program. Anne Fontaine is known for the white blouse. When we first opened our doors over 25 years ago, that is all that you would see in here, nothing but white blouses. And the store has kind of grown and so has her brand. And you have this exciting partnership with Mass Art and you're inspiring students. Anne is always so creative. Every season she comes up with over 100 designs always, of course, encompassing our DNA, the white blouse. And to inspire young talent, we partnered with Mass Art and gave them our signature white poplin fabric to design their vision of what a perfect white blouse would be. They're so talented. I mean, I could see these shirts in the store, retail ready to go. There was really only one criteria given to them. They had to use the white poplin fabric, but besides that, their one challenge was to make it beautiful enough to potentially bear the name of Anne Fontaine. There were 50 applicants and I mean, I don't know how Anne chose. The talent was so fantastic. There was a student that won a $5,000 scholarship and an internship in the design studio in New York City. Horses are magical creatures with wonderful therapeutic benefits. They're also a lot of fun too. So I invited Abby to come check out Bina Farm with me firsthand. <laughs> So this is Halo, she's our hat winger. <laughs> she loves treats. So then we're gonna put our sat on. Would you like to do that? Sure. Okay. So we're gonna oh, it's do heavy. It. Yeah. <laughs> And that's a little saddle too. Everybody. And is this English or Western? This is an English saddle. Is that good? Looks okay. good. Right. We're ready to ride. Let's go. Come on, Halo. 
Walk on. And now you're cruising. Hold on to this fuzzy pad. And still hold on to this? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's always good to hold on to your rein. Yeah. It's really important to take your horse's temperature if they get injured, if you think that they might not be feeling good because it's the uh -huh. first indication that something might be wrong. Right, like a fever. 97.7. Perfect. He's fine. Aww. You're all good, buddy. Good so go patience. Off. Yes. <laughs> didn't get poked on. Sterilize. Oh, that happens sometimes? No. <laughs> Where do I put it? Right in that bucket. Look at you. Do you need a job? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Coming up next, it's time to talk red carpet fashions from horsing around at the Ritz. That's when Boston's red carpet returns. We're here in the rolling hills of Bina Farm. What a bucolic setting. I'm so thrilled to have you guys here. We have fashion influencer, Laura Pizzuti. Hi, everyone. And event designer, Jimmy Gus. Thank you so much, Tanya. Yeah, Thanks. this is gonna be a lot of fun. So let's dig in. This year, it was all about brocade, yeah. and the guys really brought it. Totally. <laughs> John Lamb was looking so hot in his gold brocade jacket, I know. vintage. Yeah. And it was vintage, and it was very reminiscent of yes. an old Hollywood throwback, which I loved. Yes, and I love gold, and shopping vintage is just so echo-minded. Mm -hmm. Yeah, save money. <laughs> <laughs> and save the environment. Save the environment. It's all about the environment. <laughs> Next up was Gregory Sherapon. Yeah. And he was in Ted Baker and Louboutin. Yes. And Laura, I know you've worn glasses from time to time. Yes, I, I do wear them to drive. But anyways, he said Gregory as a kid did not like wearing glasses. But as an adult, he's totally grown into them and he totally rocks them. Wow, and he looks amazing. And I, I'm just crazy about that red shirt and jacket combo. Yeah. I feel like Ted Baker is such a great entry level brand yeah. that doesn't break the bank. Absolutely. And then the red shirt is it's, it's unique to it's do a red instead of a white shirt. It's refreshing. Totally, I agree. Very Iris stole the show yeah. in her br green brocade dress. Mm -hmm. It was handed down from her mother who had it handmade. <laughs> I wish my mom had something like that to hand down to me. I mean, no kidding. And I heard her mother actually chose the fabric herself and had it custom sewn in Brookline. Mm -hmm. And the jewelry was handed down by her mom too, which I thought was fabulous. Yeah, custom is definitely the way to go. It's, it's so timeless. Christina Lyons rounds out our brocade crew yes. in mm -hmm. Prada. Yes, well Prada is <laughs> a classic luxury brand whose latest collection really focused on making the mundane must have. And Christina's dress is definitely a must have. There's nothing mundane about it. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. And the celebrity patrons that wear Prada all the time are Cameron Diaz, Kim yeah. Kardashian, yeah. and Joaquin Phoenix. Mm. Our next group was all about the print. Mm. And Molly, she wowed us in her throwback to the 20s. I'm just obsessed with her finger curls. Like that's a really hard look to do it yourself. And she said she just worked with her curls and it came out amazing. Yeah, I mean, I struggle with my curls too. From <laughs> <laughs> um, but I am like really digging her dress. The lines and the cut flow seamlessly and just really beautifully. Up next was Lita. And she was pretty in pink in her Zach Posen dress from Target. <laughs> I mean, Target is my go-to for shopping, for high-low shopping, and I love affordable fashion. Can you believe they're celebrating 20 years of designer partnerships this year? I mean, wow. with big names such as Lacoon, Proenza Schuler, um, Sony, Jason Wu, and Lily Pulitzer. And Lita's dress was from the Zach Posen collection, which was a 2010 collaboration. And it's just fantastic to see all these designs coming back for this special collection. I love that, it's amazing. Our final category was black and white. Mm. Yeah. Aiden really stepped up his style game mm -hmm. in a Calvin Klein white dinner jacket and he had on off-white sneakers. Yeah. Jimmy, what do you think of a white dinner jacket? This says James Bond to me. I mean, he's only 13 years old and he's pulling off this look. Like, how amazing is that? Amazing. <laughs> so I have teenagers and I know how hard it is to agree on fashion. Can we talk about those shoes though? The like tag. the tag. Yeah. <laughs> I know. The tag. Well, I know. That label, you're supposed to leave the tag on uh, for fashion posterity, but I don't know about that. <laughs> you know. I know. It, it's a fashion statement, though, for sure. It's something new every day. <laughs> <laughs> and up next is Jenny Johnson mm. in Ronnie Kobo. 
I love Jenny. I mean, she always looks gorgeous, and her look is just very classic and sophisticated. And while it's classic and sophisticated, that slit is giving me so much yeah. life because it's it's just so edgy. Yeah. Alexandra brought her A-game, an agent provocateur. Mm. Yes, um, this is actually a lingerie house, but ladies like to and should feel free to wear their corsets mm. inside and outside the home. I, I loved her nod to the 80s. It felt very Madonna, and her white pumps are just so on trend right now. Yeah, anytime you can do double duty with your fashion choices, you are winning. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. It's time to choose a winner. Such a hard choice. They were all so good. This is tough. OK, let's count it down. All right. All right. Three, two, one. Jenny Johnson! <laughs> why, 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 why do we choose her? It's just a classic, timeless look that would work in 10 years. It would have worked 10 years ago. Yes. It's just always yeah. like, you know. I mean, everything was together. Her lips, her hair, her shoes, yeah. her dress. It was all there. Yeah, she really had it going on and looked gorgeous. Mm -hmm. And honorable mention was Aiden yes. in his white jacket and I those sneakers with the tag. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he, he great, deserved yeah. it for that. Yeah. yeah, it was a great look. Time has come to wrap up another episode of Boston's Red Carpet. We want to thank our generous sponsors who made the show possible. Raffinelli Events, The Heritage on the Garden, and our media sponsor, Boston Magazine. We'll see you next time on Boston's Red Carpet. Mm -hmm.